Now to yet another bombshell story on Facebook, revealing that Mark Zuckerberg disregarded internal warnings about divisive, hate-filled content swirling on the site, acting only after reports emerged that some Capitol rioters had used Facebook to organize, prompting a public outcry and forcing the company to review why outrage and sensational posts were running wild across users' pages. The Wall Street Journal reporting today on changes Facebook made in 2018, designed to encourage people to interact more with friends and family and spend less time passively consuming professionally produced content. Around that time, Zuckerberg was pledging to stop the spread of misinformation. And there's a lot of hard work that we need to do to make it harder for, for nation states like Russia uh, to do election interference, to make it so that trolls and other folks can't spread fake news. Um, but we can get in front of this, and, and we have a responsibility to do this. The Journal reporting that Facebook may have had noble intentions, but the changes backfired and actually made the angry voices louder. The company's own researchers finding that, quote, Misinformation, toxicity, and violent content are prevalent. The Journal reporting that Zuckerberg knew Facebook was becoming a more contentious place, but refused to change it. In 2020, he rejected proposed fixes, saying he didn't want to pursue any change that reduced user engagement. The story is one of a series in the Journal called The Facebook Files. Earlier this week, we reported on another article from The Files that Facebook's own research shows Instagram is toxic for teen girls. Joining me now, Keech Hagee, the Wall Street Journal reporter who wrote this story, and Rosalind Weissman, parenting expert, author of the New York Times bestselling book, Queen Bees and Wannabes, the basis for one of my favorite movies, Mean Girls. Keech, I'm going to start with you. You wrote this story. What surprised you most? I was surprised, first of all, that they wrote some of this stuff down. And the most shocking thing was that there are some political parties in Europe who told Facebook that they actually changed their policy positions toward more negative and divisive ones so that that message would travel on Facebook. Keith, you write that the company's own research showed political parties ramped up the outrage and sensationalism for clicks. Why didn't Facebook do more to change it? Their own researchers were raising flags, but the, the reason was that there was a trade-off here. Mark Zuckerberg was warned about some of the worst things, and he said, you know, I'm willing to test it a little bit, but I'm not willing to do something broad if it means giving up engagement. Rosalind, Facebook's own researchers point out that Instagram makes one in three teenage girls feel worse about their bodies. You know very well these platforms are the domain of women where a majority of Instagram users, I am a user of these platforms, I understand the comparative element which exists in our lives offline as much as they do online. In addition to that, you have filters, you have retouch features. Those impact me, I will admit, as a grown woman, what is it doing to girls? Well, it's making them feel terrible about themselves. And I really want to reframe this as sacrificing young people's dignity and their mental health. And we really have to get to a place where we have to realize the price that we are paying. And we are paying for it in young people's mental health. And when we continue to frame this in sort of other people's responsibility or Facebook thinking, you know, this is the domain of other governments or hiding this information, I'm just grateful that this information came to light because they've known about it. I've known about it in the work that I've done with countless young people who've said to me, Instagram makes me feel terrible, but I can't get off of it. I know that it's curated. I know about all those filters. And yet when I see people on it, I feel terrible about myself. And so if we can really reframe this for everyone about these, th this is taking away the dignity, the sense of worth that young people have about themselves, that is an incredibly high price that we are paying. And we need to really think about, you know, are we willing to continue paying this price? I don't think we should be. Right. And Rosalind, to your point, there there is definitely the role that we as consumers, as users, as parents or caretakers of consumers and users choose to make. That is sort of the immediate agency that we have. At the same time, these platforms are ubiquitous. I think many of us feel as though it is a professional liability not to be on these platforms. So how can Facebook change Instagram? If you're actually talking about changing the platform, what would it look like to create a platform that doesn't have this impact? 
Well, I want to go back actually to what young women are feeling. And also the report, the article really also spoke substantially to boys also feeling this way. Yeah. And we maybe to a lesser extent than girls, but I don't want to take away the importance of boys and their mental health um, because so often that gets swept under. We don't think about that in the same way as girls. And we know that boys are suffering. So I, I just want us to think about this in terms of when, it, when Facebook in this article talks about, you know, look at researching or talking to young people, are they, are we really actually having young people at the table? Because young people know that they are being manipulated and they also know that they in some ways can't control it. Are we actually willing, and this is my answer to your question, is that are we willing to have young people at the table where they have a voice in being able to set parameters that really help all of us? And I would actually encourage all of us to look at young people as the subject matter experts of their lives, of being the recipients, of being being targeted for their attention by Instagram, by all of the Instagram, by the influencers, by all of these things, that we, they are being told that this is who they should be. And that we, again, and thinking about this in terms of their worth and dignity and, t and also focusing on that we are not, we are not teaching young people about how to manage their emotions and how they manage their social interactions with people. Because oftentimes in schools, we are curtailed or controlled to not be able to do that in ways that are open for young people because we're so afraid to talk about what's really happening for young people. So if we bring young people to the table and truly ask them to contribute, I think we're gonna to get to a much better place. Yeah, we can't ask them to teach us how to use the platforms and not consider them subject area experts. And I appreciate you, Rosalind, making this a more gender expansive conversation. Keach, I do want to ask you, 2016 election, Mark Zuckerberg infamously downplayed the effect of misinformation on Facebook. Take a listen. I think uh, the the idea that uh, you know fake news on Facebook, of, of which you know it's a it's a very small amount of of, um, of the content, uh, influenced the the election in any way. I think is a, a pretty crazy idea. So of course Zuckerberg later apologized for those comments. But Keach, in your view, does he still have trouble admitting Facebook's problems? And when you look at these two seemingly very different questions in the argument, when you look at both misinformation and you look at the way that Instagram is impacting teens, what do you see as the through line and what does it tell us about this company? It tells us that while they are willing to study the problem, they don't have the political will within the company to fix them. That's basically it. They're incredibly talented people finding out really damning information and writing it down. Um, but then when they would escalate it to Mark Zuckerberg, he wasn't willing to make the trade-off for engagement or for profits ultimately to fix the problems.